So for the first example, what I'm going to do is connect from this Macintosh here, which has a Jitsi client on it. Uh, Jitsi is a Java-based open source uh, SIP client, connecting to um, this Wonderland server, which has another client running on it. Um, and if you listen carefully, you can hear um, Mozart being played from the radio here, um, which I guess you may all be familiar with. If we just uh, increase the volume, you can probably hear it. Turn that down. So this is a, a, a standard uh, Wonderland install, no uh, no authentication on it at all. Uh, this is uh, I'm going to. First of all, demonstrate how to use a registrar-less connection or a server-less connection. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is switch from this to a screen recording and, and talk you through it. Okay. So I've already kind of logged in, although you don't really log in with a non-registered account. Um, so I've turned them online. Uh, here's the server running my on my local network on 192.168.164, and I'm just going to call this port here. That. Please enter the phone number followed by the pound key or just the pound key to list phone information. So it needs to know the phone number. Uh, default phone numbers are 100, so I'll enter 100. And hash. showed how to connect a registrar-less client to a server on a local network with no authentication. Uh, now we have a slightly different setup. I've uh, logged in this time uh, over here to a server that's on the public internet uh, hosted at the University of Essex and it has auth authentication enabled. So I've logged in with my credentials and um, well you can't see but um, my username was Bernard and I put in my password and so I've logged in. I've added a virtual phone to the world and the radio is going playing Mozart as ever. So it's a standard uh, installation, nothing special there. And again over here I have uh, a Jitsi, the same Jitsi client. Uh, but what I'm going to do this time is um, provide some credentials on that Jitsi client. In fact the same credentials that I've logged in here with my username and password. And then from there I'll open a SIP connection and do the same kind of thing, but this time, as I said, to a server that's on the public internet. Okay, I'll now switch to the screen recording. So what I'm going to do this time is uh, log in with my username and password uh, at this uh, public-facing server, which is ISTR Web at the University of Essex. So I'll um, register there. And it's online. So I'll do the same thing. I'll connect to the control port. Um, I don't need to specify the address this time because it's going to assume I'm connecting to the same address as the server. Enter the phone number followed by the pound key or just the pound key to list phone information. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, do the same thing as last time. I'm going to put the phone number in, which is 100, and uh, hash. And uh, as you can see, we get quite a lot of feedback when you're trying to turn that up. So hopefully you will hear coming from the server. Also, you'll be the outputs happening um, from me talking into the same phone. If I mute one my other client, then that will go away. On the um, server side, uh, on the, if you can see what's happening from the Wonderland client, you can see that um, me as a SIP client has logged in um, and occasionally if I speak loudly enough um, the uh, orb will indicate who's speaking. So that's just a very simple example of um, how to connect on the public facing internet from a regular uh, desktop based Jitsi uh, SIP client to the Wonderland server. 
And finally, I'd like to show you how we can use the same server, which is this public-facing server that's on the University of Essex, which still has Mozart playing, still has the virtual phone installed, um, and um, a mobile device. Um, I'm going to demonstrate it using the iPad because it's quite big and it has a speaker, so it's easier to demo. But um, uh, it'll work on an iPhone, and I guess there's probably other kinds of SIP clients. Uh, I'm going to be using a, a SIP client called 3CX, uh, which I've got installed on here. So what I'm going to do is just stop the tape and then um, restart it so you can see what I'm doing. So here's the uh, iPad. Um, here is the uh, app called 3CX and it's uh, in double size so hopefully you can get some idea what it looks like. Uh, if you take a look up here you can see that uh, I've already logged in or registered um, with my username and I've provided some credentials. Um, I'm using the speaker. So what I'm going to do is call the control port which is four sixes. Please enter the phone number followed by the pound key or just the pound key to list phone information. So we know this is phone 100 so we'll put in 100. Hash. So you may not be able to tell, oh, but you'll hear the feedback now, um, that it's picking up the voice from the iPad and um, if you look in the distance you should be able to see on the screen the fact that I've logged in. So we'll be getting a bit of feedback here, um, but it kind of works okay. Uh, obviously the iPad's a bit big to carry around, but using an iPhone it will work perfectly well. I'll just drop the call now and the call disappears from the screen. So there you have it, you have uh, the OneCloud server, of course, uh, really just acts as a front end to the voice bridge, which provides a SIP registrar and um, a way in which you can connect SIP clients to the voice bridge. Multiple SIP clients can talk to each other. A SIP client can call in from the outside. I haven't demonstrated this here, but I would imagine it would be easy to also use the Wonderland client to, do to call out to a SIP client. Um, so it's a, a really nice system to be able to uh, enable users who are on the road who only have uh, internet access, let's say, and don't want to use their 3G data plan to use Wi-Fi somewhere and just use a SIP client to dial in. That's it.